This is the itsy bitsy. And as the name implies, this is small. So let's take a look at the materials. I've got laser dub in two different colors, sculpin olive and white. On the back, I've got a micro shank and it's covered with a white brush and then it's also covered with a ice dub in pearl which also, by the way, makes up the lateral line as you move up the fly itself. I've got a four millimeter eye, and as you can see, I utilize um, a marker across the back and also a red Sharpie to give it that, uh, that gill, gill plate. And everything is built off of a B10S size 10 hook. So without further ado, let's get tying. Okay, let's get tying. We're gonna start with an articulated fish spine. This is from Fish Skull. It's six millimeter, and I'm gonna be using a Vivas 100 thread. Just gonna put down a very quick base. Okay, next, I'm using a streamer brush. This is from Just Add Water, half inch, and the color is white. You can prep the material by just giving it a clip or you can just hit it real quick with a lighter there just to get those materials to lay down nicely for you and just wrap it down okay now the idea here is just to pack as much of this brush in as possible so there's one wrap So I'm just going right next to each independent wrap. There's three, and it looks like we're going to get four in there. There's four. Okay, four is great. Come in behind once, twice. Green those materials back. Wrap two times in front. Grab a pair of junk scissors. I mark mine with an X so I know. And now I'm just going to clip that brush right off. All right, there we go. The material that I'm gonna use throughout this entire fly is ice dub in pearl. Any sort of fine flash material will do. I'm just gonna grab some strands to give it additional flash. I'm gonna lay the first batch right down on top. I'm gonna to let the other strands hang out front. Come in front <coughs> once, twice, and now I'm just going to green those materials so they go underneath the fly or underneath the shank and just wrap it two times and, and next just grab your trusty super glue hit the first half inch or so of your thread with a little bit of glue Bring into place hit it with the blade done okay grab velcro or whatever you use to kind of move your materials and distribute them and I'm just gonna pinch them. I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch or so out the back. We're gonna trim them later, so not really worried about it. Okay, next I'm gonna grab my Orvis Super Strong 25 pound mono. I've just got a small two inch piece here. Go right up through the shank. Give it a pull. Just want a little bit of a bend created in it. Okay, so that's it for the rear shank. All right, so the front hook is one of my favorites. It's a B10S, size is 10. I'm just grabbing my Vivas 100 gel spun and just putting a quick base layer down. Okay, next, just grab your tail shank and do your best to pull the flash material so it goes back lay your mono so that it's on the top and the bottom of the hook do a couple loose wraps two or three so you can make sure that everything's aligned it looks great and now i'm going to start to increase the pressure and i'm going to go back what you'll notice here is that there's about two eye lengths of a distance off the back of the shank which is exactly what you want and 
I'm gonna go right back on that. I'm gonna go underneath just to help keep it up and tight. That looks great. And now I'm just going to wrap all the way forward and I'm gonna leave about two eye lengths of space up front. Bend it back over itself, come back and now cut off that excess mono. Do a little bit of wrap and now I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna hit it with super glue. This is a zap a gap thin. And be careful with this stuff. One drop goes a long way. And that is great. Okay, that just secures everything in place. As I mentioned, I'm gonna to continue to use Ice Dub, Ice Dub Pearl. Just gonna grab a small amount, I don't know, what's that? 20, 20 fibers or so, just dub it onto the thread. You just lay it next to it, you pinch it. And all we're gonna do here is create a little dubbing ball. The dubbing ball is designed to keep the materials from flowing over the tail. You want that articulation, and when you're doing any articulated flies, you wanna have something that stops your materials from going over that articulation. It just keeps it clean and allows it to swing nicely. Okay, <clears throat> next we're gonna do material prep. And what we're gonna use is laser dub in white and laser dub in Sculpin Olive. And the idea is to create progressive groups of material, starting with the least, right? Because we're gonna have three, so you want small, then you want medium, and then you want large. And remember, this is a small fly and so you don't want to create these huge giant gobs. Again, you're just looking for progressively larger groups. So again, small, medium, large. So that's the white. The olive, I'm going to try to match because this will just save us a whole bunch of time in the long run. And there's some small. Now it looks more like a large. And here comes medium. And just put a little more in that. Okay, so that takes care of the material prep. So now that the material is prepped, I'm just going to grab it and make sure that the tips are aligned. So that looks good. Tips are aligned. Fold it over. Come underneath. Directly underneath. You don't want it off to the side. So double check you can see how that's laying down nice next I'm gonna grab the olive I'm gonna do the exact same thing tips look nice and aligned pull the thread over pinch come on top wrap down now I'm going to just go even a little bit over those materials so you can secure everything into place Okay, ice dub pearl. Just gonna grab another pinch, not a lot, less than we used on the ball itself, maybe 15, 20 strands. Rip it in half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up halfway up the hook shank itself. So maybe just a, a little bit more. And the reason why I'm using the halfway mark is because the next group of laser dub is gonna go right on the front. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna toss the little remnant that I had. Grab the next group of laser dub. Green it. Fold it over, halfway mark. Go directly underneath. Double check, make sure everything looks good. That is good. And now I'm gonna grab my olive. And the nice thing about the material prep and doing it ahead is that you don't have to worry about proportions, right? The cool thing about laying the materials out ahead is you're able to create taper within the fly itself. As we all know, minnows look chunkier up at the head than they do at the back. All right, so that looks good. Double check, make sure that your sides are exposed. Both sides look good. Gonna go back to my ice dub in pearl. 
and you can always add more and you can always take it off but it's easier just gonna wrap let's see how that looks looks good I'm gonna add just a little bit more again rip it in half the cool thing with the the velcro when you preen it out and you clean it when you rip this ice stub in half it just gives you a greater opportunity for the material to kind of come out and to help give some life to the fly itself or if you use the full chunks um, it doesn't give you that opportunity it doesn't preen out as much especially when you get some teeth in there so same exact thing bottom pull it over 50 percent mark make sure it's right on the bottom double check looks good so that's the white I got my olive same thing line it up pinch over top make sure it sits right on top okay now I'm just gonna do a bunch of wraps up front putting some pretty good pressure on it making sure my materials are lined everything looks good all right so that's it for the tying what I'm gonna do now is just hit it with a little zap gap medium lock it into place so I just hit about half an inch or so quarter inch again with this gel spun if you're not careful what will happen is it'll slip on you which is why you don't see me doing a lot of whip finishes you see me using that super glue that just holds everything in a position never had one come undone gives me that sense of security that the material is isn't going anywhere okay so again the sides look nice and clean right where we're going to put the eye which is really important everything looks on top which is great and i've just grabbed my velcro all this does is just pulls out those excess materials so i don't want to deal with them and just doing a quick quick trim and <laughs> our a quick i don't know what that you call it just something to, to get those materials out of there okay looks nice so now what i want you to do is to visualize where that eye is going to go for me i put it right behind this first group of um, laser dub and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take my red sharpie marker and i'm going to create some gills and i know right where that eye is going to be and i'm just going to lightly hit it with that red sharpie looks good do the exact same thing i'm going to go right between group one and group two looks good come back and hit those insides okay gills are done now I'm going to do a little bit of little bit of trimming. So 45 degree right off the top. Start with the olive. 45 degree with the white. Trying to match those angles. Just double check. See how they look. Now with these rear sections of the laser dub, I want you to pull them back a little bit. Just enough because you don't want to have your next cut so sharp that eliminates that transition between the laser dub in the front and your shank in the back and your next cut come back and I want you to stop just a little short of that tail same thing all right and I know there's some laser dub hanging off the back. That's okay. Again, I'd rather have that extra dangle in there right now than to have trimmed it off 
and be really frustrated after tying the fly. Now I'm going to come across the, the top here, just trying to smooth that out a little bit. And my last cut before I go to using my taperizing scissors is going to be this final little piece that's going to be that little connection between the front body and the shank, right? And that tail. And the good thing is, because we put that ball of ice stub on the back there, what that's going to do is that's going to keep our laser dubs from coming directly into contact with that. And that's really important because if it just hangs right on top of it, that rear tail is not going to articulate and it's just going to look absolutely like crap. Okay, next grab your anvil taperizing scissors, just come right across the very tops. And if you haven't used taperizing scissors, they're pretty darn cool. They give your materials just a really nice gentle transition instead of that harsh, you know, cut that we have with the regular scissors gives the ability to feather. For those of you guys that get haircuts, right, when we go to the, the barber, sometimes they use taperizing scissors on our, on our hair to do the exact same thing, give it a little bit of that taper. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little trim. And we can play, I mean, I could sit here and probably trim for a little bit longer, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, I'm gonna trim off some of those excess tail fibers. Next, it's time for the eyes. So the eyes, these are from Fly Tires Dungeon. They are four millimeter. I'm gonna start though, I'm gonna use some super glue from Loctite. This is uh, gel control. The nice thing about this gel control is that you can put just a very small drop on and it doesn't go anywhere. So there we go. There's that small drop right along the shank, which is perfect. I'm going to grab one eye. using my bodkin. All right. I'm just going to let that eye sit. I'm going to go to the other side. Again, what I'm using for reference is right off the back that first group of laser dub. So I'm just going to put some more, another very small drop of that gel control on there. I've got the eye. By using that laser dub, you can assure that your eyes are in the exact same spot, which is really nice. All right, that looks great. Last step with the fly is just to get a little black uh, stripe on that tail. So I'm just gonna take it out of the vise, the tail between my fingers, just gonna create Really a, a nice straight tail, which looks good. I'm gonna lay it down. Grab my black Sharpie. And I'm just gonna go right along the very tips of the flash and of the brush.
and you can see how doing that really creates a cool little effect. Okay, so now that the tail's done, I'm just going to grab a brown Copix marker and just going to come in at the front just to create a little bit of a differentiation. Just a little bit more. All right, and that's it. That's the itsy bitsy. <laughs> Hope that helps you out.